Never hold a sneeze in by blocking your nose and mouth with a hand. Sneezes travel at a speed of 200 miles per hour. Now, can you imagine the consequences of preventing this turbo gust of air from getting free? Damage blood vessels in the eyes, burst eardrums, and even cracked ribs. And that's not even the whole list of injuries people have had trying to hold in a powerful sneeze. By the way, sneezing into a palm is a surefire way to infect everyone around. You'll leave germs on everything you touch – furniture, elevator buttons, doorknobs, and whatnot. You'll be the King Midas of infection. Now, let me be clear, keeping your word is good. But life is unpredictable, circumstances change, and one day you might find it hard or impossible to keep your promise. Most people, in this case, don't want to let others down and do everything they can, even if it goes against them. That's why, if you understand that you can't fulfill your promise, don't try to be a superhero. Nobody is going to appreciate the lengths you've gone. Just admit that you can't keep your word and explain why, if needed. I have to break it to you. Drinking too much liquid is actually unhealthy. And by liquid, I mean not only water, but also tea, coffee, juices, and even soup. The main problem is your kidneys. They can process no more than 34 ounces of liquid per hour. That's why when you drink a lot of water in a short period of time, you put your health at risk. Anyway, you should drink a glass of water right after waking up. It starts your digestive system. And you should drink more water if you feel tired. Exhaustion is one of the symptoms of dehydration. Always saying yes is a thing today. By doing so, you become more open to the world and don't waste opportunities. But at the same time, by always saying yes, you can do yourself a disservice. Can you finish this report for me? Yes. Could you pick up my things from the dry cleaners? I'm going out with a friend. Of course. Um, see what I mean? That's why it's rather do what you want to do and don't do what you don't want to do. And even if you know how to solve someone's problem, it doesn't mean you have to solve it. Don't brush your teeth right after a meal, especially if you were eating something acidic. It will damage your tooth enamel and lead to its erosion. Wait for at least a half an hour before brushing your teeth. And if you munched on highly acidic stuff, for example, something spicy or salty, fresh juices, soda, or fast food, better wait even longer, for an hour or so. If you feel that you have to remove small pieces of food immediately, though, use an oral irrigator. It'll help you without harming your teeth. Having a cold drink on a hot summer's day is so refreshing. But what do you do if your soda bottle is still warm? Cry? The always handy paper towel is here to save the day. With the towel, wrap it around the bottle and place it in the freezer for 15 to 20 minutes. Presto! A nice cold beverage! When you look at a check and see MP near the signature line, it means the check printer used microprint as an extra security feature. To the untrained eye, it looks like a normal line. Tricky stuff. Elevators have many tricks up their sleeves. Not that they actually wear coats or anything. Pressing the floor button twice to turn it off, holding the closed door button and your floor together to get an express ride? Does that actually work? But what about that secret hole in the outside door? Is someone looking in on your bored, resting elevator face? As cool as that would be, it's only for maintenance people to open the elevator and fix any problems. Cutting cherry tomatoes can be extremely boring, one tomato at a time. Surely, there's a quicker way to do this. Well, try placing a bunch of them between two plates. Slice in between and enjoy perfectly cut cherry tomato halves. The colored tags used to seal bread tell you which day of the week the bread was baked on. Who would have guessed? The coating makes it easier for shops to remove older loaves from the shelves. But bread tags can do more than keep your favored loaf sealed. Grabbing the right cord from behind the TV is all about luck. Until now. Use the old bread tags as indicators to quickly find the cord you want. Look at some of those loose coins in your jar by the door. Notice those ridges? Back in the 18th century, people would file coins down, round up the shavings, and mint their own coins later. To stop this, the US Mint decided to put ridges on the coins to show if they've been tampered with. 
Now it's just tradition. The indent at the bottom of wine bottles is called a punt. The punt makes the wine bottle stronger, so if they're dropped, the cork won't fly across the room with all that pressure. Now, takeaway sodas have a built-in coaster. Where, you might ask? The lid, of course. Place the lid down on a table under your drink to avoid any of those annoying condensation rings. Wooden hangers aren't just great for the environment, they'll save your clothes, too. If you have pine or cedar hangers laying around, keep them in the closet with all the others. The secret behind wooden hangers is that they'll keep moths off your clothes and make them smell fresh, too. Don't charge your phone in its case. While charging, most phones get warmer. If the case is on, the heat gets trapped inside and can't dissipate. It can harm your gadget. Don't charge your phone in the car. A car lighter port usually provides 12 volts of power while your phone only needs 5 volts. If you use a faulty third-party adapter to regulate the voltage, your phone can sometimes receive too much power. It's likely to mess up the battery over time. Don't use your phone as a camera too often. It puts your device under big strain. To make it easier for your digital friend, switch on airplane mode while recording videos or taking pics. Don't trust DIY tricks. From putting toothpaste on the screen to rubbing it with foil, it's never a good idea. If you still want to try some tip you found online, try it on your old phone first. This way you can see how it goes. Don't let your phone's insides get dirty. Cleaning the internal parts is as important as wiping the screen. Dust, lint, and dirt can mess up your device big time. But don't try to open the phone on your own to clean it. Leave it to professionals. Don't put your phone in rice. Some sources recommend doing it after dropping your gadget in the water. They claim rice grains can absorb all the liquid. But when the rice gets mixed with water, it produces a paste that can gum up small parts inside your device. Don't underestimate apps' light versions. Many of them, including Facebook and YouTube, have the same set of features as the regular ones. If you switch to light versions, you won't notice any great difference, but your phone will start working way faster. Don't keep bloatware. It's unnecessary software included on a new device by the manufacturer. It usually takes up a lot of memory and is likely to slow your phone down. If you aren't going to use these apps, disable or delete them if possible. Don't wait to replace a cracked screen. Otherwise, dust, grease, and oils from your fingers will get into the cracks. It can eventually make the screen stop working whatsoever. You might also get a cut while running your finger over the broken glass. Ow! Don't let apps pile up. It increases the phone's battery drain. Go through your apps and delete the ones you don't use or those with the same functions. Don't use public charging ports. Such ports at restaurants and airports can potentially give access to everything you store on your phone. It's safer to use a power bank instead. Don't use public Wi-Fi. Those who know where to look can easily get hold of the information you send and receive over a public Wi-Fi connection. They can even get inside your device. Wi-Fi networks you use have to be password-protected and familiar to you. Don't use your phone when the signal is weak. In this case, it has to work overtime, constantly sending signals to the nearest cell phone towers. When the device fails to make a connection, it has to send the signal again with increased power. Better switch to airplane mode till the service gets back to normal. You're in a hurry to get to work, but suddenly feel like using the bathroom. You're far from both home and the office, and you feel you don't have much time. You find some cafe, run to the bathroom, lower the toilet seat, and freeze. Hmm, who sat here before me? How many germs are on there, you think? Then, you tear off a long stretch of toilet paper, divide it into sheets, and cover the seat. Or just put the whole stretch on it in a V-shape. And only after that, you finally sit down. Sounds familiar? 
Well, I've got good news and bad news for you. The bad news is, the paper won't help save you from germs. Good news? You don't have to waste time covering the seat with it. The fact is that toilet paper isn't an obstacle for germs and bacteria. It absorbs moisture, which makes it an excellent place for microbes to reproduce. Your skin, on the other hand, is much more reliable than paper. Microscopic organisms can't pass through it. There is nothing to worry about as long as the toilet seat looks dry and there are no cuts on your behind and hips. But if you're still anxious, the best option would be to use sanitary tissues. Just wipe the seat with them before sitting down. Toilet seats are actually much cleaner than other places in the bathroom. A lot of bacteria live in places people touch with unwashed hands, that is, the sinks, doorknobs, or rolls of toilet paper. When you finish your business, lower the toilet lid before flushing. Clean water gets mixed with dirty, and splashes of it fly to the surface and contaminate everything around – walls, floor, and even toilet paper. In a way, you sit on even more bacteria when you cover the seat. Wash your hands for 20 to 30 seconds with warm water and soap. Don't close the tap with your hand, use a tissue or paper towel for this. And try not to touch anything with your hands on the way out. Another important question – how to dry your hands? Using a paper towel or hand dryer. Lots of microbes live on both of them, but paper towels are safer. The hand dryer blows off germs both on your skin and across the bathroom. Or, you know, wipe your hands off on your pants. Shower head. Microbes accumulate inside it, and you risk breathing or swallowing bacteria when you turn on the water. This is especially dangerous for people with weak immunity. Turn on the water about a minute before you start to wash and regularly clean the nozzle to reduce the number of germs. Sponge for dishes A week is enough to accumulate a critical level of bacteria there. Just think about it. A wet, soft, warm place with microscopic pieces of food. Isn't that a paradise for bacteria? Uh-huh. Use antibacterial detergents to spoil germs vacation. Squeeze and dry the sponge as best as possible. Change it once a week. Your favorite place in the house is also the dirtiest. It's the fridge. One of the main sources of bacteria is food packaging. Thousands of people walk past your products in supermarkets. Some pick them up and put them back. Meat is of a particular danger if it lives in your fridge for a long time. Try to put it away from other products so that the microbes don't spread to them. Regularly wash the shelves and the door. Reaching for proteins a protein shake after a workout is a great idea overall, but at the beginning of training, you need much more complex carbs. They will help to rebuild muscles and help your joints deal with pressure. For example, try to add a banana to your protein shake, but don't overdo it. Very heavy. Going for chicken 100% of the time. Chicken is a great source of protein because it's easily digestible for us. But if you start feeling that soreness in muscles increases, Try to add some fish into your menu. It'll help your muscles recover without pain. Relying on protein bars Yes, even if the package says they're sugar-free, you need to read carefully. Some protein bars are still sweet even without sugar. They use an artificial sweetener, and it may upset your stomach. Plus, non-sugar sweeteners make you want to eat more sweets, and you better avoid this temptation entirely. Stay hydrated, folks! Losing just 2% of your fluid reduces your performance by a quarter. And try to stay away from so-called sports drinks. The fact is, these drinks often contain sugar, and you don't want it in your diet at all. The solution is, just make a habit of drinking water regularly, even if you don't feel thirsty. Overly relying on supplements No, they aren't bad for you. As long as you take them in right amounts, they won't do any harm. But you still need quality food. Let sports supplements be what they are, just supplements. You know you need more protein, but don't feel like eating a ton of unseasoned chicken? Here is your protein shake. You know, things like that. Skipping and after-gym stretching Stretching is best after training, not before. If you do it before, you'll fail to prepare your muscles for the stress of a complete workout. But if you'll find some 15 minutes for stretching after the course of exercises, your muscles will have a much better time recovering. You'll feel much less soreness, too. Being inactive Of course, your body needs to rest, but try staying active. 
go for a walk, avoid tasks that require sitting in one place, or at least try to do them while standing. It'll help your muscles to go smoothly from an active to a resting state. Not using a foam roller. It will relieve half of the soreness you have in your body after excessive training. Combine it with stretching after the gym and you'll save your precious time. Just don't overdo it if you don't want a reverse effect. It's still a stress on your muscles, and you don't want too much of it right after a workout. Not changing clothes after gym. Even if you're in a hurry, and even if you can go take a shower immediately, always change your clothes. Even slightly wet clothes may be real estate for nasty bacteria, and they will chill down your muscles, make them sore, and slow down the healing process. When you're on your way back to the car after bagging up everything you bought, use loops on a shopping cart to hang the bags. Now, softer items like bread, eggs, fruit, and veggies won't get squashed by the heavier goods. The grooves in the escalator steps help push up objects like bags and garbage, not letting them get trapped between the steps. Also, they provide easier walk-off, since when they reach the lower or upper end of the line, the steps become flat. Oh, by the way, the grooves in the elevator depend on what kind of music you're listening to. Some music is groovier than others. The first golf balls were absolutely smooth, but then players noticed that scuffed and cracked balls perform much better. That's why now all golf balls have dimples that make them travel almost twice farther. Though the tab under a rearview mirror in your car works great for an air freshener, it's really a switch that goes up and down. Flip it one way and you're in a daytime driving mode, seeing everything crisp and clear. If you flip it the other way, the reflection gets dimmer, toning down the glare from headlights behind you. Those small raised bars of rubber you can see on most new tires are there to tell you when it's time to replace the tires. If those bars are worn out, it's not safe to drive anymore. If you don't have anyone to hold the other end of your tape measure when you try to measure something, tap a nail into it. Now, simply hook your tape on it using the tiny hole all tape measures have. A hole in the center of a spaghetti spoon exists not only to strain water, but also to measure a portion of spaghetti. That hole fits exactly one serving. If you grab a beverage in a glass bottle at the base, your drink will get warmer because of the body heat. That's why most of them have long necks. Carrying a bottle by the neck keeps your beverage chill. Besides, holding it that way is just easier. However, don't do this with your kids. The square-shaped spoon that goes with McFlurry helps to mix the ice cream toppings through the dessert. The spoon hooks directly into a machine and spins around. However, don't do this with your kids. Ever forgot which side your gas tank was on? That's what a small arrow or a triangle on your dashboard is for. If it points left, the gas tank door is on the left. If it points right, that's right, it's on the right, all right? The small disc under the lid of plastic water and soda bottles creates a seal that keeps both liquid and carbonation inside. Without it, your soda would go flat pretty fast. When should you wash your hands? Every time after you've touched these. Cash. After testing several $1 bills from a New York City bank, researchers discovered hundreds of bacteria and viruses covering them. Handles, doorknobs, handrails, and whatnot in public places. Thousands of people touch them every day. Lots of them are bound to carry some unpleasant stuff on their hands. Pretty much anything at the airport. With so many people crowded in one place, these transportation hubs are ideal for spreading infection. Be especially careful with plastic trays at the security. They are even dirtier than bathrooms. Anything in a doctor's office. Touchscreens. And also make sure to clean your phone and other gadgets with antibacterial wipes after coming home. Stationery that isn't yours, especially pens. Restaurant menus. Just one menu can have up to 185,000 bacterial organisms. Soap dispensers or pumps, especially in public areas. Cutting boards and kitchen sponges. Also, wash your hands, 
before and after treating a cut or a wound, after sneezing, coughing, or blowing your nose, before inserting or removing contact lenses, after touching an animal, after changing diapers, after touching garbage, before preparing or eating food. Is it possible to wash hands incorrectly? A recent study says 97% of people don't wash their hands properly. Speeding through the process when you're in a hurry will get you nowhere, even if you use tons of soap and scorching hot water. Is there a special hand washing technique? Oh yeah, especially if you want to join a secret clean hands club. Actually, the World Health Organization recommends using several important rules when cleaning your hands. After applying enough soap, rub your hands palm to palm first. Then rub the back of each hand with the palm of the other with your fingers interlaced. Rub your hands palm to palm again with your fingers interlaced. Wash each thumb separately by grasping it in the opposite hand and using rotational movements. Now, you don't have to take your thumb completely off. Rub the tips of your fingers against the opposite palm in a circular motion. Clean each wrist thoroughly with the opposite hand. After rinsing your hands, use your elbow to turn off the tap. If it's not possible, use a paper towel to touch the tap. What if there's no soap in a public bathroom? Rinsing your hands under clean, running water is still better than not washing them at all. Scrub your hands even more vigorously than usual. Apply the same techniques you would use if you had soap. If you have antibacterial wet wipes, use them afterward.